seen the trend in the last 10 years is more people from nonprofit organizations coming to talk about, gee, I gotta improve our image some. So that's really one of the reasons that uh, I proposed to Bonnie, let's do this. So why don't we do this right quick because it won't take long. Just introduce yourselves because I can't see badges very far. I know dog. <laughs> no dog. I'm Kathy Galloway. I'm from Williamson County. Okay. Okay. I don't know where it is, yeah. You are? Jane McCullough, and I'm from Burton. Jane? And Fred Sachs from Marble Falls. Okay. B. Carroll from San Antonio. Okay. I'm John Nicolados, also from San Antonio. Okay. Mary Moses, I'm from the Lindheimer chapter in New Braunfels. Okay, great. Uh, one of the first PR things I'm going to suggest in the next group is don't have badges that flop over. Uh -huh. yeah. And that's why, as soon as I saw that, I said, well, I got, I got one. Everybody has the same person. <clears throat> yeah. And, Saturday yeah, of course, Saturday my <laughs> meal is, yes, that's a very that new name. Uh, I'm always, I'm always interested to go someplace, since I'm on a number of boards, uh, this did happen to me, and I'm, I'm here talking to these people, and they say, you know, say so we're the best kept secret in Texas. Now, wait a minute. The best kept secret in Texas? Who, what does that mean? What it meant to me was, those guys weren't doing a very good PR job, or advertising job. So I always say that, that there, there's a difference. Advertise, what's the difference in advertising and PR? Cost. Well, no, that, that, no that, that's, that's, that is a great call. I always say, do it this way. Advertising is what you pay for. Public relations is what you pray for. Just, really? Why? Well, whatever. If you think about it, you guys read the newspaper. Now, if I'm in the younger crowd, I'm not, because there's been a whole, there's been a sea change in public relations going to, from just a what we would call traditional media into social media. And so because of that, since most of you read the newspaper, even my kids still read the newspaper, it means that I get a lot of information and that what I get is 75% comes from press releases. It's not really news, it's stuff that you guys send out. Now immediately you're gonna say, well I don't know what to write, and that's what we're talking about today. And the other thing is people don't know what the process is. It's a simple process. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I mean, really, it's not a tough process. And I didn't hear any of you that are really from a real big town, are you? Oh, well, okay, Don, after I talk I can get you to our <laughs> Okay, well, I, see, I just heard names. I, I can't see that part of see San Antonio. But the fact is, those of you in a rural area have a big advantage because a lot of rural papers really have to scrounge around for local news. You got a real advantage. And, uh, but you got to get to know the you got to get to know the uh, editor if that's the right way to say. And um, I'm just going till I know Lonnie's going to have his gun in the heart. But okay, here's here's what happened to me a while back. Now I can get almost anything printed in local newspapers because I work at knowing who the editor is, so they know you and they know you're not you know going to exaggerate or blow smoke on them or anything. So this friend of mine calls us. He's the editor. He said, "Say so. Guess what? What? Travis really made me proud. He's an eight-year-old kid, and he's they were studying seasons in second grade. And so I said, Travis got up there, and the teacher asked what are the four seasons, and he gets up and says, 'Okay, it's Dove, 
<laughs> deer, duck, and turkey. And then, of course, Tom says, I didn't say so. He got it in the right order. <laughs> so, now, now, when you know their page, the newspaper editor real well, they'll call you with stories like that. I mean, you know, because, oh, we're just friends. Well, they do. They food everything in. So, enough of that. Wow. Do I? <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, um, I, I did think of something today. Somebody in the back of the room was talking. I, uh, what happens? One, I used to, I, I worked in the State Department of Commerce, and then in my job now I work in Murray State. I, uh, I make a lot of presentations, and so what happens? Depending upon your job, sometimes your boss does not want to make those kind of presentations. And the states would go so and so and do this. So I made, I was making what I thought was a dynamite presentation that just so happened I was in pretty far west of Oklahoma, but this room must have been 100 people. And like a fool, what reminded me was when Lonnie says, Can y'all hear me back there in the back of the room? Well, so I said that. Can you guys hear me back there in the back of the room? Uh, one guy says, no. <laughs> I'll trade places with you. <laughs> Sometimes that happens, but you just got to be kind of fearless because one of the big tea of deals about the public relations is public speaking. Okay. And you got to get out and do that. I should say you have to, but actually you saw... One of the problems that we have with leadership, whether it's NIPS or anything else, is that people are a little reluctant to be in the limelight. Oh, to do what? Be in the limelight. Why would that be? You don't want to look bad. Either. Well, you don't look bad. Actually, in some, in, I think it's being overtaken now. The only days, the fear of public speaking was greater than the fear of death. Do you guys know that? It's so, at any rate, uh, let's let's just go forward. If I can find a place where I was, I'm sorry. Hey, you don't sweat for you. Just take right on off and go. All right, in your handout, there's a lot of there's a lot of things. I arranged it in this fashion where you can keep keep notes on the bar right hand side. And then in the back, there's some appendices, which I'm going to talk about, which would be a shortcut to help. So let's just talk about these for a minute. Well, I already said something about public relations and what it is. You're really trying to change people's perception and image of your organization. What, image, what kind of image do you think the NIPSOP has? I mean, I don't know why I'm asking Those who know of us admire us. Yes. It's getting people to know of us. We had a speaker last week who works in the same town that we're organized in. And he, and he looked around in this room, which had close to 100 people in it, and said, I didn't know you all existed. Well, all right, let me ask this. How many of you? I, I have the, I think the name actually is somewhat of a deterrent to us, and it's Mayflint Society. I think the word society has a not an exclusivity to it. Well, exclusivity, or it's just a, a fuzzy, fuzzy group that we're not really doing anything. We're just friends, and we're, we're a society. Like we're, a club. we're a garden okay. yeah, Well, we're a garden there's club. nothing wrong with that either, but I've got yeah. We, we sort of have a compound in my, in my place. My mother lives about 100 yards one way, and got a daughter lives about 100 yards the other way. And so my son-in-law's over. He's, he's more like my son than my son's, because they're not interested in anything I'm doing. But of course, David's not interested in Nipsop. He's always got to make a joke about, you're not going off those Nipsop things, are you? He can't, he's finally learned after about three or four years to pronounce Nipsop. Uh, you know, and so I'm trying to educate him. But also, I'm on my local water board. What do you think my advocacy there is? Yeah. We save water. It's a stunner. 
in my community, when I when I heard the, the, the presentation this morning, I thought, holy miracle, we've got people in our community that would use 15,000 gallons of water a month. The average in our state is 5,000. So you'd think they're water, they got a swamp. But then the other side of the coin is they're always fussed about it, it costs too much money. And everybody wants cheap water, it's abundant, safe. And I gotta tell you, it just doesn't always happen. So, anyway, right, let's look. Uh, okay, public relations. Well, what you're attempting to do with public relations is communicate. So, in a lot of organizations, uh, you'll have the chief information officer. And that officer's job, when I was with American First Corporation, it was one, to write the press releases, but two, it was to tend to be investor relations. And I had to be the guy that intercepted between my boss, the chairman, and the newspaper, because you'd send out a news release and they'd want to spot to speak to chairman. We don't believe this stuff says so. Or else I'd give them the company speed, right? They don't want to hear that. And nothing's, nothing's worse than to come home about six o'clock, you get home, and here's the phone call, and the guy said, oh, this is Billy Joe, I'm a reporter of Wall Street Journal, and I'd like to talk to you about that. Oh, I'm sorry, you have to just, one of the bad things about being a PR person is you just have to know everything about the company and be able to jump in and talk about it. And that's one of the hey, things that happens to us all whether you go to chamber of commerce meeting or whatever the meetings are, people want to ask you, what's nips on? Tell me about it. So you all, all of us need what I'd call 20 second, 30 second elevator speech. Here's what NIPSOT's all about. I'm trying to communicate that. I'm trying to gain acceptance. The other thing with a good PR campaign over time, it'll help you raise money. Oh, you can always. It, 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 this is a discussion. It's not a lecture. Okay. So, um, on the elevator speech, that would be our mission statement. I would repeat that mission statement, I'd memorize it, and somebody said, "What do you? What? What about? You don't even have to plan anything. It's already there. You, know, you, already, you already know what it is." And that's a good. And then somebody would come back and say, "Well, tell me more about that." But that's real. That's. Oh, that's really a good. So just memorize the mission statement. Yes, and uh, as Shakespeare would say, it needs to come trippingly off the tongue, <laughs> you know, or you're not you're not stuttering about what what the mission is. Well, the the mission statement. Think about it, is the reason for being. It's why we're here, and that that's that's pretty powerful. Uh, why I do a campaign? Well, all of PR campaign is is organization around, I've got some kind of goal, I've got some, some kind of objectives that I want to do, and then I've got some plans, strategies, actions to implement, and that's going to be my campaign. You just want a total kind of picture. That make sense? So what would, I, what would they look like in a NIPSOC chapter? Hmm. Let me throw this good, good different. We have a festival coming up. Yeah. Uh, it's all interbred between native plants, master gardener, yeah. guys, magras, for birding and wildflower. Yeah. We, we work together all types of things. And that's great. And it, which really helps out. But we got Kelly Bender coming down. How do you get the word out to the people that you aren't preaching to the choir? That that's where the question comes in. The plant people, they, we, we already got that crew, or the people that have, you know, doing this better, have similar interests. How do we reach out to those other people? All right, uh, think about what happened here. We had Fredericksburg, Kerrville, Bernie, I'm not sure who else, all working together. But one of the things that you can do is send out a certain news release, and actually I'm gonna talk about Media kids here in just a minute, but you can see kids here in just a minute, but 
you can send out a news release about here's this event coming up. But the second thing is you can highlight here are the speakers that we've got coming up. And each one of them be different. And each one of them is an opportunity to send a, a, a media release. But what you can do is it comes all that into a, into a media kit and remind me to get back to that whenever we get down there to that little break. Um, <coughs> but what takes that other step, I mean? Yes, oh, we're, 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 we're getting into paper, you, you, but it's still, you're getting into paper at the whim of the editor to tell this. Oh, that, that's right. Think about it. Here's what can happen to your news release. One, nothing. Or two, they might print it exactly like you sent in. Or three, uh, they can chop it in half. Or this is what they'll do in Oklahoma, because I've had this happen numerous times. They'll take your news release and add to it. <laughs> uh, I, I knew, I'm on the board of a, of a, in Southern Oklahoma, we have a great big major festival. So I'm on that board as the PR person. So I sent in my normal press release to them. And um, my gosh, I got a whole page coming back. And what they had done was to go back through back issues and they made a big story out of it. Well, so I'm going to call John and say, hey, I really appreciate the story you told me about Travis, and also I appreciate the great coverage. It wouldn't have happened unless I'd have known the editor. And it's really easy to get to know the editors. And you got to... Oh, yeah. Well, think about what the editor... You actually could. Well, i got to tell you, uh, I can't say Star Telegram, but Denton Record Chronicle. I sent off a news release about the speaker that we had uh, last month. And so, guess what? The editor calls me and says, any particular day they're going to do this speech? <laughs> I was like, uh, what? I mean, this dumb sounds good. What's more basic? But I remember, normally I give, my, anything I write, I give it to my wife. Now, I don't mean, I'm not saying it to me like that, because we've been married over 50 years. But she's a tad critical of my writing. Now, she would have taught that, but... You know, it was one of those deals. I was I was in a rush. So, at any rate, uh, your editor will call you. And otherwise, folks will just not print it. They say, "Well, it's a complete well, How do you get to know your editor? Well, you one, call up, say, you call. Oh, well, you could do that, or you could go in there and talk about it. But the best thing they can do is to take a news release, physically take the news release, and it say, "Hi, I'm Don." Because we did that for the native plant week. Yeah. But it doesn't go to the editor. It goes to person that's in charge. Well, in a bit of that, uh, I, I, the, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, well, somebody has a garden section, maybe, or our community interest kind of things. I, I know every, every, the Denton Record Chronicle, they're, big, they're, they're a subsidiary of the Dallas Morning News. So, uh, it's, they're a little tougher, but still, people are local folks. And the first thing is learn who the people are. And the second thing is, don't ever make any of them mad if it's a small yeah. organization. Yeah. Because I I don't I have to send my stuff in by somebody else so that it's not sent by me. Because I have made them mad and I swear the woman is never gonna retire. Well, sometimes those things happen and there's just not much you can do about it. Uh, and I always tell folks, never burn an editor. Don't don't send in a story that exaggerates, let's just say that exaggerates the truth, a lot of puffery in it. But then sometimes people just don't like you. I understand that. Uh, in, in, well, in Oklahoma, here's what happens. Um, look, Murray State College is in Tishomingo, Oklahoma. It's on the very southern, southern edge of the state. To the west is Ardmore, a town of about 25,000. The east is another town of 20,000 grand. And so I can get 70 grand paper. But the guy in Ardmore, it doesn't matter if I were the deity himself, I could not get it in that paper. Because it's not that he didn't like me so much, he just didn't go to Shvito. And you're going to have that happen. And there's not a thing you can do. You just have to go with that story. One question I, I'm just starting to take over this yeah. job for the Lent Time chapter. And also, we're, we're doing a program, uh, uh, Native Instead of Common Exotics, with a couple of, uh, with one other chapter, with the Guadalupe chapter. And I'm, I signed up to do the PR. So I sent out, when we did our big launch, I sent out a ton of stuff, and 
I talked to a lady from the New Brussels Herald Times and everything, but nothing seemed to get in. And so, uh, what you're saying is you just need to get some more personal and, Person. get, and keep sending it. Another thing I'm confused about, you know, when you go on their website to, to, to send information, like, they'll have different things. It's like, like if you're going to just make an announcement of a meeting, that's one thing. But if you want to tell about a big program you're launching or something, that's another thing, right? Right. So there's, there's. Do you use the web, the, their websites and? Only to get an email address or maybe to figure out, you know, you're going to who, who to contact, who the staff okay. is, and then I go down that until I find somebody. Okay. And you know. And Facebook. I mean, I tried to. I did some stuff on Facebook. Like with NBU, New Rockwell's Utilities and stuff, and, and where I put information in, uh, for, and, and they were like, oh gee, thanks a lot for sending it. But then I never saw any any yeah. fruit of my labor. <laughs> well, they're, they're a public utility, so they're going to be nice to you, because they want you to use whatever the utility is. Uh -huh. but, but let me ask. Because uh, they, well, they were saying that they wanted to get information out about this, because, you know, it's been like years ago. Yeah. Before, but, Anyway, I guess I'm just learning. I'm, I'm just well, all right, let's, uh, let me just see where we are here because I'm, I'm sort of off. But, uh, let's, let's think about, uh, with, with public relations, you, you need to really think hard about, one, what is my message and who do I want to send the message to? I was doing this seminar, not, I'm sorry, I, it was actually a planning session I was doing with a, with a nonprofit. 40, 50 miles away. So I asked them, okay, who are your target markets? Who do you want to receive your message? And so it was, you, I got on here, let me think where it is. It's probably on your page three, and then say groups up here. Well, in our, in our case, I might say to plant lovers, officials, funders, whatever. However, in this case, what this folks did was housing. Well, that was a big deal. One, who were the lenders? That was one. Of, that was one of their big target markets. And one of the reasons is they had at least two lenders that they owed money to and hadn't made any payments. It was just an interest-only loan. And so they were in a little better relationship. Where and this is silly, but they didn't want to be asking for them to call the note. <laughs> right, well, it's just the way it is. So then the second thing. They weren't public officials, federal, state, local. The reason is that they, there was a state housing organization, there's a federal housing organization, they got funding out of the feds. So it was, they wanted to, they had been on the feds list of, I don't know what they, I don't, I couldn't remember exactly what they called it, but anyway, it was the bad news. And the feds wasn't advancing the money even though they were doing the program. And the reason was, it seemed like that last spring, by the time the grant was 50% up, they had spent 75% of the money. So the feds were kind of edgy about, wait a minute, uh, you're overspending. So they, that was a big deal to get to get a better attitude out of the feds. And that's just the way it was. Uh, of course, they, in this case, they went homeowner past homeowners because they'd given testimonials about this great program. So you need to think about what's, who, what kind of messages do I want to get out? What's, what's my target audience? And the next, the next thing is, how am I going to do it? Nothing beats word of mouth, whatever you do. Uh, you talk it face to face with somebody, uh, that's their own face, it, it's the best. But the second best, if I can find it here, Okay, here's the second best PR thing you can do. Just pass those around. This will get you pretty excited. Matter of fact, take two. <laughs> All right, well, think about this. You, you, you had to be sure Mary is. All right, now, guys, this is super, and I mean like super, S U P R, super powerful. Is it real? Oh, yeah. How many people did you, have you met here? Lots. 
Then the question is, Cecil, how many business cards have you given away? Oh, by now, about 20. Nearly every serious business transaction, whatever it is, starts with a handshake and here's my card. When I want to talk to the speakers, I can have here's my card and I need your card because I want to contact you. I wouldn't spend a lot of time, I just want to make the contact. So when I sent the guy something, an email, they'd say, oh, well, that's old Cecil there. I guess. Wouldn't remember meeting him. Well, he does not, I don't know. That's just, I really envisioned and asked for, but they, you know, you don't, beggars don't get many choose, to be choosers. Just take some of those little puppies there and just look at them. I, I keep business cards, guys. And it's, it's golden. Yeah. I got, well, now let, me, now let me tell you, I've been a consultant now, 10 or 12, no, 13 okay, years. Okay, the now. older one of yours. Oh, I got lots of them. Board member. Oh, well, yeah, I, I'm not a board member anymore. I'm, I guess I'm a high paid president. <laughs> that, Go ahead. I, that's what I'm handing out for. And this is kind of interesting. Okay, this B, I want you to feel the difference in those. Yeah, that's the non standard size. Yeah, non standard size. Uh, if you'll feel my card, you'll see it's a non standard weight. It's feels, yeah. Actually, I was at a trade show. Now, believe this or not, you go to a trade show to try to make contacts with potential customers. This particular guy had typed his name, phone number, on some just regular white paper. Then you could tell. He got scissors and cut it out, and that's what he was handing out as a business card. Now that just doesn't really inspire you to want to do business with a guy. See, the yeah. first thing I did when you handed me yeah. my card was feel it to see if it was engraved. Yeah, I never. Is it worth spending your money? How many of these do you think are engraved? No, a few of those. A few of something. The real estate agents, they get stuff on. Yeah, well, in my box here, there's probably 500 of them. Here's a, a little wood one. <laughs> oh, I've, I've got some that are even little tiny computer boards. Little teensy computer boards. And they just got a, one of those return address stickers that's stuck on the back. So there's a zillion different kind of cards. And uh, I just want you guys to see these. And um, Hey, can you put those things for your... Smartphone, one of those little things called. I'm not smart enough to know, but yes, you can put your smartphone, uh, that, that little squiggly round circle. Yes, you can. And, and then it sends you to a website and stuff like yeah. that. QR, QR code. That's and a QR code. code. But I do have to tell you that uh, whenever you order, if you order cards from like this to print, 250 cards, 10 bucks. And then, of course, you have to pay shipping, which let's say six or seven. Let's say it's eight bucks. So it's eight, eight plus. Ten, what's that? Eighteen dollars that you invest. Let's say it's twenty, because I might can figure that out. Uh, gee, that's less, that's less than a penny a piece that those business cards are costing. You can give two or three away. But then let me tell you how. how one of the ways I use these is uh, I'll take the box. Page three, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't go to 2.30. <laughs> I, I, hey, I, I can go to a five. <laughs> they probably have something more important to do. Everybody else is, well, they're from the normal way. Okay. They have mass problems, so. I see. We didn't just pick on you. Okay, so hey. I can hit the arrows if you want. I don't know. I know where you're going. Are we staying on time? Because I'm supposed to hear you. I'm going to let everybody, if we're going to go to 2.30 and let everybody start like 10 minutes late. Okay. I'm not, guys, I'm not going to fool with communication audit. I'll, I'll tell you about it later if you really want to. If you're just burning desire to know about it. There's a little page where you can put in, here's my message. Would I have a different message to these people? And that might not be your uh, messages there on page five. Oh, so you think the message should be unique for each group? 
it could be changed just a little. And I'm going to show you what I do with the, with the news release here in just a minute. Uh, medium, where we talk about that. Okay, media release. This is really underutilized. People don't utilize it enough. It's free. So if it doesn't end, what do you have to spend a lot of money? Okay. Media release, there's just no cost. It's very underutilized. Now, once you get to know your editor, you can just send it to them email. It's perfectly acceptable about it. A media kit, what this is, and I'll show you some examples. Well, I can here like a big shot, maybe I won't. Uh, a media kit is just a folder. I'm going to start passing around. I don't have them all filled, I just have some of them. Some of them are fancier than others. You guys just take one of those. Let them just hold this. You, you look at that one. See if you got a dog on <laughs> You can buy these 50, 60 cents a piece, okay? And one of the things you can do is on your computer, if you have a, have a right sticker, you can just put, here's my chapter's name on there. That's all you gotta do. And then in this little place, you can put in, here's my news release, background information about your chapter, maybe your picture, get your picture, uh, and get one of those glamour photos. That's, that's, uh, empty. <laughs> well, I know, but I, I want you to, I want you to feel it. Of course, now see, I've used, I've used these quite a bit, and you can tell they're, uh, I probably have to buy a new ones. Good quality folders. Good quality folders, about 60 cents. And then you pack everything in for your one go-to when you ask about, okay, we got this new deal now. We're gonna have four or five uh, organizations together. You pack all the information in there once for your media kit. And you take that to the, to the, to the media. Here's the other deal. So you got an event here. Not, what could be better than holding an event? If you don't do anything else, the press will cover the event. Because you've got a good a good number of people from your area that are there. How um, how soon should we be thinking about before an event? Is this a month in advance? Um, well, let me tell you uh, that I'm so glad that you asked that question because um, let me just go. On. I'll talk about another. That's the trickiest of all questions. Why? Because you want to get there before people have made plans, but not so far ahead they forget. That, well, now Jane, that's, that's great. And I'll add that to my repertoire. But the other deal is the media actually wants to sell you some advertising. They don't want to run yes. unpaid ads. Yes. So, so if you're a long way ahead, they're going to think, well, Gosh, they just asked me to run on pay day up here. And I gotta tell you, that's that's a PR person's big bug of it. Just you're right, you're asking to do an unpaid ad. And of course, a lot of things don't go. But 75, well, I've had I've had lots of failures, guys. <laughs> you, you send it in and you just kinda hope it goes off into never never lands to go. And they don't call you up and say, Cecil, I'm not running that bunch of junk that you sent in. I mean, no, they, 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 they well, when you yeah. send it, is it okay to call and say, did you get that? Or should you know? Well, that now that's probably the second biggest question that you've got to ask. Um, if, in fact, you know the editor pretty well, they'll let you know. However, you just can't go bug them. Is that when are you ever going to run that press release I sent you? Uh, you can wear out your welcome. So it's, you gotta think, public relations is a real delicate job. I mean, that, that's one of the reasons it's so difficult, is it? It's real delicate. But we're gonna get this deal about news releases, because this, this will, say, this will make you a lot of money. A release should be about news. Imagine that should be no more than one type page. 
You just can't send them out a news release or a press kit that weighs as much as their goal in the picture. They're not going to. Well, think about this. You're probably not going to get 15 seconds, maybe, of their time. They're going to look at it. It's got to catch their eye. And if it doesn't, it's like you said, got to put it right in front. It's a, it's a tough thing. Send them electronically now, but you know you're at And it's deadline. If you're past their deadline, you're just dead. Because they're not going to make an exception for you. No. Well, in fact, the, I couldn't imagine the worst job than being in the newspaper business. And let's just take the weekly, for example. Okay, they get the paper out, say, on Thursday. What does the guy do? Friday comes along, what does he do? He's out selling ads. And then Monday, He's out selling ads, but also he's got somebody there trying to take all the releases or whatever come up with the news releases to make a, a pages, stick them in there. And then Tuesday morning, it's got to fly. I mean, about, about 10, 11 o'clock Tuesday morning, that newspaper's got to go to, to print. Well, the guy's got a whole Wednesday, maybe, but he doesn't have to do anything until when? Wednesday afternoon, because late Wednesday afternoon, he can go to the publisher and get his papers. Yeah, it's relentless. But then, now that sounds like a constant deal, right? What do you think it is if you got a daily newspaper? It happens every day. And so, guys really scramble around to get to do that process in one day. Of course, you have to be a bigger paper to have a daily, but still, it's, oh, it's a killer. I, I could not imagine anything worse. Must be some sort of job. News releases, all right, here's all you gotta do. A head and a release date. Now don't do like Cecil did and just totally forget to give them the guy the news, the, the date. The date's important not only on your news release, but also, now what I do, I put mine in the email now that I sent. Um, suggested headline. Writing headlines is really tough. Well, you got to pack everything you two or three, and you and you got to make sure that it doesn't say something crazy. Embarrassing. I, I honestly had a friend of mine, two of two of these guys in the Lions Club, and so they had their picture there, and then the article to the side <laughs> was about a, a theft. It says. It says Two arrested in theft. And then here, <laughs> here was Mike and Bill's picture. Of course, there's a different caption under it, but it's just so close, you know, he was guilty by association. Well, it's tough to, for the newspaper guy. They were just saying, I got this one story, and the other guy's got this story. So I was walking. Yeah, it, it, just, it, it was kind of funny for the whole town, though, to pick that up. Uh, okay. Think about uh, an inverted pyramid, if you will. Okay? I got a big broad D at the top, a little tiny at the bottom. Now, this is that's classic uh, PR theory. However, I honestly don't do that. Uh, in one way I do, in another not. The, the top part, broad, here's the most important stuff in the, in the first paragraph, because that makes it easy then for the editor to just chop stuff off at the bottom, and it doesn't take anything away from your most important. Then the middle is kind of border plate, and the end, in mine, I always put in there, um, well, I always put in there here, I'm going to end it here, they, they'll know. N, R, N, the little number side like that. Now let's see if I got it in here. Let me take this page to look at it. Look in the back. Yes, she did. I'm sorry? It's on page five. Or, or if you're looking for that. No, 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 I'm, I'm what I'm looking for is really on the top of page, page three. Now here's a news release, and I've, and I've got several things in here I want to be sure we go over. One, Trinity Forks has a little logo. Okay, got a little cute logo. Tell us for me to release, here's my headline. Trina, well I might have a different one than you guys have. Tiana, I looked at that, that's not the way you started. Tiana. Raymond speaks on Brits for Barry. Okay, you see that? Well, the places there is shaded. All right, everything else is the same. Everything. I mean, I'm lazy. 
and and I just put in, oh, here's who's going to speak, whatever, and the bottom something about Rihanna and something about the bit maybe, and I change that every time. But the other, it's boilerplate to me. I just keep. I told you guys, lazy. Yes. So see how it makes your news release a lot easier. I can do a news release in you know 15 minutes. And see, everybody's oh, say so man, you're just great. You got that 15 minutes. No, I'm lazy. I, I planned on somebody calling me and needing something right quick. Now, I'm not going to tell you that that's the very best way to do a news release in your area. It works in my area. Because I've now worked up to maybe 30 newspapers or some kind of contacts, and it's so easy to have my little visitor boom pop it in there and it goes to everybody instantly. This is like you have listserv of all your like little. <coughs> we have a a neighborhood newspaper yeah. that comes out, and it's just for a cer certain number of neighborhoods, not associated with Star Telegram at all. Exactly. Yeah, I, I do send them on Star Telegram, but uh, you know Jim Barnum. Jim writes a blog, so I send one to Jim, and he puts our newspaper. Release, or news release in his blog. Now you got to remember to send the learning, but the fact is, you never, you know. Uh, ages ago, John Watermaker was talking about his advertising dollars. He said, look, 50% of my advertising dollars are totally wasted. But the heck of it is, I don't know which 50%. <laughs> <laughs> and really, see, that's the way your, your news release, all you, all you have to do. Well, well, I'm, I'm thinking of Benton, and I'm thinking yeah. 30, you've got 30 resources, okay, you're reaching down into, yeah. to Fort Worth, are all of those print media, or are some of them radio? Media? I do try to send it to radio, but radio is an entire, writing for radio is a world different than writing for the news media, I'm for, for print. Um, and there's so much competition, you could just never get anything on TV. Now, that's my humble opinion. I don't even try. But radio, you, you might you might really get something. But it's just it's just not worth it uh, in my case. Like the public public radio uh, public service announcement. Well, here's the deal. Or, wait. Let me put it in a different context entirely, and this this will make sense. I write a lot of grants, and so this past year I had a grant. It was up in Oklahoma to the Sarkis Foundation. It met every requirement. In fact, the staff recommended to the board to be funded, and the board comes up and says, we're not funding that kind of grant this year. We just changed our mind. Oh, you didn't find what? They weren't going to fund that kind of that grant for that purpose. And we got a lot of starving kids out here because we've been starving kids. We didn't give you the money. But I had the same thing on the Meadows Foundation in Dallas. I mean, I, I was writing about a library program, and, you know, and so that's, that's the same kind of thing that they've got so much, such a flood of people asking them for money, or in our, in, in your, in our, in our case, asking for news, or just a spot, and uh, they can't do it all. So they got to cut somebody, so you're probably They got to, they got to, well, and that's one of our, that's, see, that's, but that's really one of our issues. We've got to make Nipsop a lot more appealing and sexy, where they say, my gosh, this is a great news, let's do it. Because the fundraiser, the yeah. fundraiser for Boys and Girls Club, the Sarah Foundation, yeah. all the big ones that had the, the big money and the big names, you know, yeah. they get in there. Yeah. And so it just it just takes persistence and a long time. Okay. Uh, I already talked to you about on every live news media. About on every line of news media, uh, and what's a media kit? You saw those now that I gave you. Just take your last, your last news release, a backgrounder, and then whatever you want to get. You got your, your thing together. I would think, okay, I got a, I got a backgrounder on five chapters in there, all of them, and then about this event and why you're why you've all come together. With the, you know, that, that'd be my news release. 
finally all come together for this one purpose. And you think about, if I'm in a tiny town in Oklahoma, or if I'm say in North Texas, East Texas, somewhere around out of the Dallas metro area, gee, it's nothing, people know everybody 50 miles away, 60 miles away. You guys know that? Yeah, everybody knows everybody 50, 60 miles away. Well, I knew some guys in Guyana, Guyana, Oklahoma, and guess what? They'd get up a date, and where'd they go? Drive down road. What? And they told me that you guys got to be nuts. Well, where else are we going to go for a date around here? Okay, well, they're going to go to a movie and dinner or something in Amarillo. And nobody thinks about driving those distances. In the metro areas, you think about all the traffic. You don't have all the traffic in some rural area. That's the deal. So, anyway, enough of that. Uh, your latest release, a background on Nipsock photographs. <laughs> Go to the store and get yourself a glamour shot of yourself. That's really hard. <laughs> well, I realize, but still, think about it. <laughs> Would you ever put two two news releases in one folder and have it do it, no. or would you just do one at a time? I would do one at a time because um, each one of them are, just, are separate incidents or separate, separate things that you'd like to cover. And I'm, I got to tell you, I'm always afraid they'll take one and not the other. So, of course, they still might reject the book, but I'm always, always concerned so, about that. Are you saying get a photograph of yourself or your organization? Yourself, so maybe the president of your organization, uh, have some kind of flower of the month. Yeah. Uh, okay. Because I tell you, um, pictures draw attention. And you're going to get, I'm not being negative, but you're going to get bored of having your picture in the paper all the time. Pretty soon people are going to start bugging you back. I saw you in the paper again. <laughs> I think we got people coming. Oh, yeah, we got another 10 minutes, so I better move. Uh, I talked to you about electronic media kits. Uh, basically, it's just taking all those separate ones and putting it together. Uh, there's pros and cons about events. Events are a tremendous PR kind of thing, just like you're talking about. And, not only that, they're uh, that could be money makers for you. Uh, on the bad side, they take a lot of time to some money. And if you've not put on a conference like this one, I had a conference one time I put on, and uh, of course I had a lot of help, a lot of big team. Yeah. There's 400 folks, and I, not again in my lifetime will I ever do something like that. Uh, communication plan, let's, let's go this. You got a little chart here, and basically what this is, Here's some past, and one of the things I want you to do before you leave, not, not this today, we had longer I'd have done this, but before you leave to go back home, just think about, here's all the tasks, here's what I'm going to do Monday morning. Okay, okay, developer release template, what I gave you there was a template that I used, remember the, the shaded part was just the part I change all the time, but the other is just my template, so just design them. Just design your own media release about the last speaker you had or a new one. And the great thing about computers, man, you can just drop it in, you got it. Um, send the media release. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At uh, Trinity Forks, I normally send nine a year, but every chapter I'll at least send six. Are we going to do this today? And that's. It's, it's not a biggie to do that. One of the things I hadn't talked about, speakers, Europe, doing some speeches. Now, I want to tell you, you need to work up some kind of speech about some aspect of native plants and make a delivery. Lines, rotary. How many of you live in a town as small as 3,000? 5,000? 10,000? Okay, in, in a town of 10,000, how many lines, rotaries? Oh, we got you got two day break, two two different rotaries and the lines. Yes. Okay. Now here's something you may not know. The first time I 
I, I live in Oklahoma City, and so uh, they invited me to speak at the Lions Club, so I drive down, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, man, they finally heard I was such a great speaker. This is terrific. So I get down there, and uh, I'm sitting waiting here, it's going to be a bunch. And the, uh, before me, though, the uh, secretary gets up and says, okay, guys, he had an eight and a half by 11, 14 sheet, all in grids. He said, look, I gotta have some speakers. Last year we didn't do too good. This year we're gonna have 50 speakers, one a week. I don't care who you get, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, anybody off the street, any one by. Well, now that really pumped me up. <laughs> so the point of that is, hey, I'm, I had guys invite and say, say, you ever go to Lions Club today? Oh, okay. So, you know, he's driving in the road. Oh, listen, uh, I have a problem. Did you beat the program today? I'm not kidding. I'm driving in this place. So my point is, you can get a lot of speaking engagements and, and tell, well, but you can make an interesting program. I mean, what, you know, of course, I, it's, it's terrible to say, the group we had, nobody was really talking amongst themselves. They were listening this morning, what the people were saying, because they were all, you know, it, it, it's sort of preaching the choir in one regard, but lots of really great information. And you can develop a very short program. Anybody can speak on anything for 15, 20 minutes. I know you're thinking, say so I can't. Yes, you can. Firstly, if you talk about native plants, who in this room is gonna know more about native plants than you guys? I mean, really, that, that, that's something where people worry about, that I'm gonna be embarrassed or somebody's gonna challenge me. And so that's tough. It's not going to happen. You, you're going to be far not more knowledgeable. Uh, one, I want you to get nothing else. Oh, well, it's like. What you say, Cecil, is that's a really interesting question. I haven't thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, but <laughs> now I got to tell you, Don, that that's that's great because. But then when you tell them that, get back to them. With yeah. the answer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, exactly. Don't do something like this. Wish the heck I'd leave the answer at that. You gotta exude some confidence. And I know you would. Alright, I want you to take a look at page two. Reasons to send out a news release. So many people say, well, see, so I don't even know why I'd send out a news release. That's why I stuck this in here. Is it uh, two B it's at two at the top? Here are just some reasons, and of course you can fill out this at the bottom. Monday morning, here's what I'm going to do to my PR stuff. And then I want, one of the things I want to kind of close with, I've got about two minutes. How many of you come to these kind of sessions or other kind of sessions and you have no idea what you're doing? Why am I there? I'm going to sit over the corner. No. Now, the, and this side, you can do that. But the deals, you're working a room, and here's how you work a room. You're not there for the cookies, okay? What you're there for is to make contacts. That means you carry your business cards, let's say in your left purse or left hand pocket, and hand them out and shake hands right hand. And so I think that these people are trying to clamor in here and uh, we probably ought to close down. If you've got any questions, uh, and be, be sure if you would, let me get all my business cards back. That's, that's good. I got contact on there. I'd be glad to talk to anybody about it. Uh, I know you're going to be excited to digest this information, and I do know we went fast. I don't know why the computer didn't work. That's just. So you don't mind if we call you? No, I'm inviting you to call me. <laughs> or email. Email. That, that's an email at school, but that's okay. You can call me at school. I think I put my. I think my school number is on there. Nine four zero. No, that's my home. The 580 is the school. Okay. You got your home. Okay. Yeah. So call me anytime about a question because, you know, really, there's no them and there's no they. It's just us. And we've got to make this thing go. So glad you guys are here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.